the long and winding road that leads to your door. Hello, and welcome to Popcorn News, something to watch while you eat popcorn. Do not try to comprehend it all. Nay, just eat the popcorn. Paul is dead. On January 7, 1967, the car belonging to Paul McCartney got into a car crash, and consequently, a few newspapers the reported DJ that he died. The Detroit radio station took a call from a college student named Tom Zarsky. Zarsky told the DJ everything about the Paul is dead rumor, and as proof, told him to play Revolution No. 9 from the Beatles' White Album, Backwards. The DJ did so, and was very clearly able to hear the words, Turn me on, dead man. Here is Revolution 9, played forward. Number 9, number 9, number 9, number 9, number 9. And here it is, played backwards. Death of Paul McCartney. Essentially, people believe that Paul McCartney died in the car crash on November 9th, but was replaced by the winner of a Paul McCartney lookalike contest named William Campbell in order to save their career and not break the hearts of the fans. In addition to what was already said, there were more clues present. A couple clues were seen on the Beatles' eighth Finally, studio album. Finally, the cover of the Abbey Road album has been analyzed by supporters of the Paul is Dead theory. So, in this picture, Paul is seen holding a cigarette with his right hand, even though he was left-handed, so this might indicate that the person in this picture is indeed not the real Paul. Lastly, this picture was supposedly taken at the area where the car crash happened. When I was a mere lad in the 1960s, towards the end of the 1960s, the Paul is dead rumors were afloat. And a friend of mine had a reel-to-reel tape recorder, so we decided to check for ourselves. We recorded onto the reel-to-reel the Revolution Number 9, Played it backwards, and sure enough, we could hear, Turn me on, dead man. Turn me on, dead man. Also, on that same album, between Blackbird and Piggies, I think it is, there's a sort of a mumbling sound. And we recorded that, played it backwards, and you could clearly hear, Paul is dead now. Miss him, miss him, miss him. So I'm not saying that Paul is dead, but it's kind of strange how you could uh, hear those things. In, in Life magazine, uh, I don't know the exact date, but towards the end of the 1960s, it did a, a story on this about is Paul dead? And uh, they course they poo pooed it but they did include information about voice prints which are unique identifiers so that if you're talking on the phone say and and you try to disguise your voice or you put a handkerchief over the the mouthpiece or whatever uh, the voice print will still be a unique identifier for you and in that life magazine they had an analysis of voice prints of uh, Paul McCartney at different times, and they showed uh, that there was more than one Paul McCartney. Again, this does not mean that Paul was dead. I don't say yes, I don't say no. But uh, just to mention that there was that unique identifier. The recent Hillary Clinton body double rumors have reminded me of the old Paul is dead rumors. Right, so we're going to play the footage here and Now this is somebody just right off the bat. This is somebody that was diagnosed with pneumonia being dehydrated uh, two uh, conditions which I personally have had uh, it does not take that short a time to recover to the point where she couldn't even stand on her own 
And now she has nobody around her in this video. The the closest person is that guard or police officer, uh, which is nowhere near her to hold her up. She's able to walk uh, pretty well uh, on her own without any assistance whatsoever. I find that kind of odd. I also find it kind of odd that she, if you can tell right here, uh, she's lost some weight pretty quickly. She's also been able to change, uh, slightly change the color of her hair as well as the style of her hair, which is uh, pretty, uh, <laughs> it's pretty odd to me. Also, there's nobody around her. Not only is that weird from the fact that she uh, can stand and walk on her own without any assistance, but nobody is close enough to really get a good look at her. And what I'm getting to is the fact that there's stories all over the internet right now, and even mainstream media is covering the fact that there is a Clinton body double, or they're mocking the fact that the internet is claiming that there's a body double. So, is it Hillary Clinton who emerged from daughter Chelsea's apartment? People compare earlobes and such things, but how about somebody doing voice print comparisons between former Hillary's and the purported Hillary who emerged from Chelsea's apartment? And, incidentally, the Manhattan bomb blast of a week later happened in the Chelsea neighborhood of Manhattan. I merely note the coincidence between the Chelsea Clinton apartment and a week later the bomb blast in the Chelsea neighborhood. Maybe somebody was sending a message, that's just conjecture, but maybe some kind of a message was being sent. Also curious to note is how on the same day as Hillary Clinton's collapse at the 9-11 memorial event, PBS aired Churchill's Secret, a program about how Prime Minister Winston Churchill had a stroke in 1953 and how this information had been kept secret at the time from the public. I'll put in the book. Just hold my hand, Winston. Is it another stroke? That's what I suspect. The untold chapter of The Greatest Britain, Churchill's Secret, Sunday at 8 on ITV. A long, long time ago